So let's get started. The Developer tab is where the tools involving macros are located. The Developer tab is not displayed by default, so you'll need to let Excel know that you want to work with it. You use the Options dialog box to display the Developer tab. So we'll go to our File tab, choose Options, select the Customize the Ribbon menu on the left, and on the list on the right, check the Developer box, and then select OK. And now the Developer tab will display on your ribbons. You'll notice there are a lot of shortcuts or options on the Developer tab, and we'll cover a lot of these during this session, but for now I want you just to understand that this is the tab that will be related to macros. A macro is simply a recorder that you turn on to perform a series of actions that you'll need to perform repeatedly and then turn off. Excel stores the recording and makes it accessible to any Excel worksheet. You can record any menu action or command to make it part of the macro. So to record a macro, you turn on the recorder, perform the actions you want to record, and then turn off the recorder or click stop. You can also quickly start recording a macro by clicking the macro icon in the status bar on the left hand side. If you make a mistake while recording a macro, Excel will record that as well, along with any corrections you make. So it's very important to turn off the macro, the recorder, when you have finished a series of steps that you want in the macro. If you forget, the macro will include the extra steps that you may have gotten recorded after you finished the steps that you really wanted to record, but you forgot to hit the stop button. When you run a macro that gives results that are different from that expected, you need to check to see if the Relative References button is activated or not. If the Relative References is not activated, the macro will record your actual values if you do any actions like cutting and pasting. So let's see a macro recording in action. In this example, we will sum the column and add formatting to the numbers. Select the Developer tab from the ribbon, select Use Relative References, and then select Record Macro. In the Record Macro dialog box, name your macro. To make the macro available to other worksheets, select Personal Macro Workbook from the Store Macro In drop-down list. Select OK to begin recording. Now perform the actions you want to record. In this example, we're going to insert a sum. And then format the total with a currency formatting. And then add some boldface formatting. Once we're done with all of those steps, select the Developer tab and then select Stop Recording. Now that we've recorded our macro, we'd like to now run it on the current month's report. So in this example, we're going to place our cursor in the cell where we'd like to perform the macro, select the Developer tab, and then select Macros. In the Macro dialog box, select your macro name from the list, and then select Run. Depending on how many steps you had in your macro, you're going to see it run on the spreadsheet and it'll perform the same steps that you recorded with the previous data. When you close Excel, make sure that you answer yes or save to save the workbook with the changes of the macro being recorded or else the macro will not actually be saved and it won't keep the macro and make it available for other workbooks as well. So that's how you record and run a macro. This has been a time saver for me and my students that I've taught this to over the years especially for those people who have monthly reports and you need to run the same type of analysis every single month. Setting this up as a macro is going to save you potentially hours worth of time each month. Now let's go practice with your exercise and you'll get so much better at macros that you'll never know how you lived life without them. To save you a couple of steps, you can add the macros icon to the quick access toolbar.
to quickly run current macros or record new ones. So just as we've done in another session of Excel, let's go to our Quick Access Toolbar. On the right-hand side of the Quick Access Toolbar, click on the drop-down and select More Commands. In the Choose Command from drop-down list, we're going to click Macros. The macro you recorded should be listed. Select it and then select Add to add it to your Quick Access Toolbar. As usual, you can use your arrows to move it up or down in the list, which will move it left or right on your Quick Access Toolbar. If you'd like to modify the name of the macro, select Modify. In the Modify button dialog box, you can choose an icon to show on the Quick Access Toolbar. You can also modify the name. So click OK to exit that and save your changes. And then once you've got it set up on the Quick Access Toolbar in the location you'd like, Select OK in the Excel Options window. And now you'll see it added to your Quick Access Toolbar. Excel security may prevent some of your macros from working depending on where the workbooks containing the macros are located. You can change the security settings to avoid warning messages each time you run certain macros. So to do this, we're going to click on the Developer tab and select Macro Security. You're going to select one of the following. Disable all macros without notification. This option will only run macros in documents with trusted locations. The Disable all macros with notification will disable macros that are not in a trusted location, but it will provide you a notification so that you can choose to enable these macros on a case-by-case -case basis. Disable all macros except digitally signed macros. This option allows you not only to have macros run from trusted locations, but also macros that are digitally signed by a trusted publisher. Other macros are disabled with notification to allow you to choose to enable or not enable those on a case-by-case -case basis. And then the enable all macros option is the least secure in general, this option allows all macros to run, which is potentially dangerous since virus authors often use macros to distribute malicious code on computers. Microsoft does not advise, and neither do I, using this setting. Check the Trust Access to the VBA Project Object Model box only if you are a developer. This security option makes it more difficult for unauthorized programs to build code that self-replicates. So once you set your security option to how you'd like it to be set up, click OK.